welcome to the Easy Odds 2017 Cheltenham Preview. I am here with the man, the myth, the legend racing blogger himself. Lovely to meet you. The two of us have come together. We have indeed. I thought there'd be some sort of implosion of worlds maybe yep. when we came together, but... The blogger and Jake Jones in the house. Apparently not. Um, anyway, we're going to get started straight into it because we've got quite a lot to get through. We have indeed. The first, ra uh, first video we're going to do is just going to be basically uh, championship races and then the second video we'll do, which will be out next week, will be everything else. So handicappers we like or all the novice races, um, you know, triumph, cross country even. If you're fancying the cross country, I don't know. I haven't personally, but you might do. Yeah. So first championship race of the festival hasn't really taken much shape yet. Um, there's a lot of ifs and buts going on with the Willie Mullins yard, of course. Oh, um, there's a bit of positive news yesterday, in fact, in the, the um, Fahina and Annie Power did a nice piece of work. So hopefully that'll be that'll be uh, come to fruition. But um, yeah. take it away. Who's your who's your fancy for this one? So I mean, we've got the big Willie won't he with the Willie Mullins contingency, Fahin and Annie Power. But the way you've got to look at it is, you know, Fahin realistically is going to go for the champion hurdle. Mm -hmm. I can't see him stepping up to three miles for the stayers at this stage. Annie Power clearly doesn't stay three miles. She got beat in the race two years ago, three years ago by more of that. You know, she pulls too hard. So I think realistically, we're looking at Forheen lining up if he performs well in the Irish Champion Hurdle next weekend. Um, and I think he's likely to line up. And if he lines up in the same form that we've seen him as he was two years ago, you know, he's going to take all the beating in the world. But there are a lot of ifs, there are a lot of buts. Currently trading at around nine to four. Um, you know, it's a dubious race at this stage. If Annie Power goes for the race, again, she's the one to beat. She's been absolutely phenomenal and she gets that vital seven pounds. But I think the vibes are suggesting Annie Power's going to go for the mare's hurdle. So at this stage, it looks like Forheen. Um, Jan Worth, you know, he's been improving. He was very impressive at Kempton last time, beating the new one. A lot of people continue to knock this horse, but he keeps on winning, you know. He was second at the Cheltenham Festival behind Willie Mullins' horse, who runs in the JLT. Uh, ba -bam -bam -bam. Your kill. Your kill, indeed. So, you know, he could be the each-way alternative. We know he's fit and we know he's healthy. But I think at this stage, it's a no-bet race. But if you had to push me, it would have to be Forheen the machine. Unfortunately, annoyingly, I 100% agree with you that I think Annie Power's going to go for the mares. Yeah. Uh, they're completely the vibes that are at the moment. A uh, bit annoying. Uh, I think she <coughs> she would... Oh, it would be too, Imagine seeing her against Forheen with that £7. Just run Giving her it. £7 would be un unreal. Yeah. I, I, I don't think... I, I'd struggle to think anything that could be uh, giving us ten pounds. Yeah. I don't know. Forheen at the moment, it looks like he's going to go if he runs well in the Irish Champion, like you said. Indeed. Um, that's going to be a good race. That's interesting to see. Um, back in October, I did a few tips for the uh, championship races at um, Cheltenham. Yeah. I don't know. A couple of you might have read them already on the Easy Odds site. Um, Yanworth, I tipped at sixteen to one. And then it was when I think he actually drifted a little bit bigger when they thought he was going to the world hurdle. Hot hands up, I've done my money on that. <laughs> I thought he was going a three mile route. Well um, done, mate. But I think he's a little short of five to one now, but he's done nothing wrong either. Yeah. Um, obviously, he got beat by York Hill in the Neptune last year, but a lot of things went wrong for him that day. Mm -hmm. Wasn't given the best of rides by Barry Gassi, taken quite wide throughout, made a couple of mistakes as well. Um, he's been good this season as well. Obviously, I think he's got a fantastic chance, mm -hmm. um, but. If Fahin comes there in any kind of form, he's going to be very, very, very hard to beat. But I've got a little tip for if, if Fahin and Annie Power don't run, which is and could happen, Indeed. could happen, I Indeed. suppose. It's not, it's not that likely anymore, yeah. but we haven't seen either of them and we have no idea what's going on really. Yeah. So it could happen. And I just think Moon Racer, you might call me mental for that, obviously he's a novice. Um, but it would be such a, uh, it would lack no, it would complete, there'd be no depth in the race at yeah. all. If, if, yeah. the, but if neither of those horses turned up, and would they get a better chance to win a champion hurdle? It's a big Moon, shout. Moon Race is an eight year old now. Yeah. Um, he's really, I, I rate him a lot. I mean, when we get to the Supreme, um, I might as well tell you now, I'm going to be tipping. He's, he's so one of the horses you, you, I fancy. You rate the Bally Andy form? Uh, well, yeah. Um, I mean, that race was a, obviously a, a bit of a dodgy race in yeah. Cheltenham that he won. Uh, no pace at all. But I mean, I think, he, I think that didn't suit him either at all. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that race suited him at all. If you look at him in the champion hurdle, I mean the um, champion bumper, a lot, yeah. lot went wrong for him that day. Yeah. Um, I just think he's a really, really, really good horse. Um, I actually think 5-1 to one is decent value for the Supreme, but 40-1 to one here. Um, when I wrote this, <laughs> it, was, it was before the uh, positive... Yeah. You know, vibes about Annie Power and Fahin, but big you know, if they don't run, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a Absolutely. outside one. A 40 to 1, you can't really go wrong there. 
I think the one horse we haven't mentioned is Henry de Bromhead's Petit Mouchoir. Oh, of course, yeah. It was pretty impressive beating uh, Nichols Canyon last time. Yeah. He obviously underperformed, we can tell that by mm. the way he run, but he might have won the fighting fifth when he fell two out. Yeah. Um, and Henry's a master with these hurdlers, so he yeah. could be one at 12 to 1, who could also, eight, 8 to 1, could run a big yeah. race. I think he probably would have won the fighting fifth. I, I agree. I tipped Irving for that race, so yeah. I was happy about okay. that. But um, yeah. I think Petit Mouchoir was given a peach arrive as well that day, so. Uh, Kind of stole the race a little bit, even though I think it was very impressive. But um, yeah, and obviously we got we got we got the handicappers that are in there as well. Brain power has been uh, you know easy to back. A lot of people Absolutely. have been tipping up. A lot of people back again because he's uh, so like out. you said, John. It's an open race. It's an open yeah. year. Why not look for an outsider that continues to improve? And yeah, healthy. exactly. Super superb story is almost definitely going to run as well for Dan Scott and yeah. um, won the county hurdle last year. And, um, next. We're going to go to the Champion Chase, the feature race on day two. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty obvious he's going to win this. <laughs> it is I mean, I mean, Duvan. If he doesn't yeah. win this, yeah. I will be ridiculously shocked. Yeah. Um, he's no price at the moment. Obviously, he's about one to three or something. If you want to actually put 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 your life savings on that, I suppose we can get right. a bit of four to nine. And I'll be honest, I think on the day you might get eight to fifteen. And if it does hit that price, I will be having a maximum maximum <laughs> win there. As really? everyone knows, the blogger that is the front gets stuck in. That is the blogger all over. What more a do maximum you want? Bet on a horse like Duvan at the Cheltenham <laughs> Festival. You know, bookies yeah. give crazy odds on those days, and yeah, hopefully yeah. they might do something crazy. And I'm I'm going to get stuck in because. Another thing that I like to think about with Cheltenham is if you've got a certainty and you fancy another horse, yeah. always chuck that certainty in, your doubles and trebles, to boost it up a bit more. Yeah. So if Duvan does fail to win, I think bookies are going to be absolutely rolling in yeah. But we all know he could be one of the greatest we've seen. He, he's exceptional. And, yeah. um, I just want to see this horse be tested for once mm -hmm. because he's beating the same horses over and over again. I want to see him next year versus Altior Imagine. over two miles. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's going to be unbelievable when that does yeah. happen. Hopefully it does, unless he steps up, obviously. Yeah, or Duvan's going to win. Uh, right. There's not much point to anything. I, I was looking at the uh, obviously Fox Norton is second favourite at the moment. Haven't seen him since his really impressive win at Cheltenham. Yeah, um, he's obviously improved massively since last season when he was destroyed yes. by Duvan in the Arco and yes. then destroyed by even further uh, uh, um, Aintree mm -hmm. by the same horse. Um, different proposition this time. Now, with, now with um, Colin Tizard, man of the moment, man of the moment, big time. But um, yeah. It, He's not going to beat Duvan. He's obviously worth. He's, he's been injured for a while as well. So, I don't know. I, I probably is he, is he going to go straight there? I'm not sure. At, at this stage, it does look likely. My question to you is: If we take Duvan out of the race, yeah, how strongly would you fancy Fox Norton? I don't know. I, I want to see him. I want to see him run again. Okay. I really, really fancy Ahmad without okay. without the favourite. Even, even going left-handed. Even going left-handed. I'm going to kind of take it, take it on it, like uh, take his form at face value. Yeah. Um, he has gone left-handed before, albeit in lesser races. He's mm -hmm. absolutely destroyed a field at Ludlow, uh, Plumpton. Yeah. Really poor race. Um, the second was... Uh, oh, I'm not allowed, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's gone left-handed before, absolutely destroyed the field. The third actually won since then. It was a nothing race, but they wanted to see uh, how he went left-handed yeah, before. Right. Uh, they went to Cheltenham. In the end, he got injured, uh, so they couldn't go. Yeah. Um, he was obviously ran a crazy race in the Tingle Creek, it went off indeed. like a madman. I've written about it extensibly in my uh, Clarence yeah. House tip this weekend. Um, made two enormous mistakes. One of them was ridiculous. I think it was the eighth fence. Yeah. Um, nose on the ground. Any normal horse would have pulled up. Stayed mm -hmm. on again after the last. Um, I think he's got a big chance this weekend. And without the favourite, yeah. I think he's got a chance in the Champion Chase because it's just a nothing race without the favourite. Right. But LTO's obviously not going to go. No. Uh, he's in there a second favourite. Then we've got Fox Norton. Yeah. Underso is going to go for the Ryanair. Seen him. Underso is almost definitely going to go for the Ryanair. Yeah. Uh, Godzo, not good enough. Don't think he's that good at Cheltenham either. Yeah. Special Tara, I don't think as good as he was last year. Very unimpressive last time out and seems to be on the decline personally. Yeah, big Vroom time. Mag isn't going to line up. Sizing John's going for the uh, Ryanair as well. Yeah, and then it's just Sider Grugy, God of Victoire. Yeah. So, yeah. I think he's an alright bet. At, um, what is he, 7 to 1? Oh, 8 to 1 without the favourite. That's massive. Yeah. I think that's absolutely massive. Yes, um, indeed. Yeah, so that's, the, that's that. Duvan wins. <laughs> Lump but, on. Big. <laughs> get all your doubles and trebles with him and get a bit of a juicy return on there's, the comeback. There's obviously going to be a big Willie Mullins yeah. oh, multiples is. going yeah. on. Absolutely. Whatever, whatever, whoever runs in whatever race. Um, next, the feature race on day three is the Stayers 
hurdle, formerly known as the World Hurdle, um, won, nine, won last year by the uh, Beast, that is Thistle Crack. Yeah. Strangest race ever, just absolutely destroyed One them. of the best even money shots you've ever oh. had in your lifetime. Oh, yeah. And I was saying it before the race, and I just thought, if he was with Willie Mullins, I thought he would have been a one to two on shot. Yeah. But because he was with Colin last year, mm. it wasn't the huge name he is this year, you know, he was just devastating. Thistle yeah. Crack and uh, Vortor Double that day. Oh. Wowza. We don't get opportunities as punters like that very often, do we? <laughs> yeah. Wowza. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, so what, who do you fancy in this one? Blogger. I mean, we've obviously got, you know, you know what I mean, Harry, who's mm. improved from mark of 123 all the way up to 165. And I interviewed Harry Fry at Ascot, and I said okay. to him, have you ever had a horse like this before? And he just went, no. Mm. It's unusual. He's improved the best part of three stone, which is phenomenal for a racehorse, you know, in the space of a season or two. He's done nothing but improve. He's won on good to soft, he's won on good ground, he's won on heavy ground, he's had uh, three runs at Cheltenham and he's won on all three occasions. He's a course and distance winner and it's just hard to oppose him. Mm. I hate to put up a favourite but when all the stats are in his favour yeah. and he's improving, we haven't got to the bottom of him last time, it's just hard to see what's going to beat him. I mean you've got Vroom Vroom Mag but again it's the question where is she going to run? Yeah. She's second favourite and it's just this whole Willie Mark Mullins saga, mm. where, where is she going to go? I think she will actually go for this race because mm -hmm. she's not going to go in the um, champion hurdle. She's She's not going to go for the mayor's race if any power goes for that. So is she going to go for the Ryanair? I don't think so. Okay. You never know, Willie. But uh, Nichols Canyon is unproven <laughs> over the trip. But my tip for the race is good old Jeski. Nice. He chased home Hurricane Fly five or six times back in the day. He's won over three miles, beating Hurricane Fly before he retired. 14 to 1. He's due to make his comeback tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If he shows the same sparkle and wins impressively and he goes for this race, he's going to be 4 to 5 to 1 on the day. And we can currently get around 14 to 1. Yeah. 100% agree with you there. I think Jeski's a big price. Yeah. Um, he's not actually, I tipped you, know what I mean, Harry, in that tip uh, that I was mentioning earlier in October yeah. uh, at 16 to 1. Okay, wow, <laughs> because you're on he, the value. Because he was, uh, he was um, he'd just been bought by JP. Yeah. I thought people were under, massively underrating him. Obviously, the old Bartlett wasn't a great race last year, but a lot of, him, a lot of things went wrong for him that day. Uh, he drifted left, he, yeah. got, he got pushed left, in fact. Um, he made a mistake at the last, he made a couple of mistakes on the way around. Uh, he was improved massively. He's unbeaten th this mm. season and last season. I think I still think he's underrated. Yeah. Um, I do think Vroom Vroom Mag will go here as well. Mm. So that means his price is not going to get any shorter than five to two. He's going to drift out. I reckon. Totally agree. I think he could go to three, th three or four yeah. to one maybe. Yeah. So I wouldn't back him now at all. Wait, definitely wait for a bit longer, especially if Jeski runs well, like you said. And they're both in the McManus colours, so that will be interesting. Oh, that would be very, inter that'd be very yeah. interesting. And unlike Rich Rishi. JP isn't afraid no. to run two in the race, as we well know, because when yep. Jeski won the champion hurdle, mm. he beat Tony McCoy on my turn or yours, mm. which is brilliant for the sport. More of that, and um, more of that. My turn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I think he's 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 not that much good value at five to two at the moment. Agreed. Wait for a bit onto the day. Obviously, hopefully, he's, uh, a couple of you got on at sixteens. Yeah. Um, Nichols Canyon uh, is a ne kind of next up in the betting about uh, twelve best price twelve to one. Obviously, some people are doing some bookmakers are doing a non runner no bet, yeah. so their prices are going to be a lot shorter. But you can get twelve to one at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think he'll probably go to this as well. Um, I don't fancy him that much to be honest. Yeah, um, he's a bit on and off. He goes really really well first time out. I think. Uh, obviously, he's also I think he's fantastic at punches town. Mm -hmm. uh, he beat Fohin last year when Fohin was just that was just a freak run. I, I would yeah. completely put a line through that, but he did beat him. And One he beat six on. Yeah, and he beat Jer <laughs> and he beat Jer's girl as well yeah. uh, in the same race yeah. this year. I just think he's good first time out. Um, I don't know. He was third in the champion hurdle last year, which was a good run, but uh, not that great really. When you, when you think consider the horses in front of him, obviously Annie Power, but um, yeah. Vroom Vroom Mag, like I said, big chance as well if she comes here. But is three miles our best trip? I'm not sure about that either. Um, I was there the last time she won. She's done it well. Uh, she seems to be a horse whose versatility is just incredible. Two, mm. two and a half, three. I mean, what a mare she is. But yeah. does she have the class? And what has she actually beaten? I mean, the best horses she's beaten are rated around 148. Okay. She's going to have to step up massively to really be taking on the top yeah. class horses. And um, she's not for me. Mm. If you want one an outsider, which is... Uh, Obviously, everyone wants an outsider, yeah. um, which almost, not 100% won't run, but probably won't run. More of that, you can currently get a 25 to 1. I mean, chasing hasn't been the game for him. He has not been a good jumping well at all. Throughout his chasing career, even when he was a novice, I don't think he was jumping that well. Uh, definitely this year, he's been jumping awfully. Um, it's not, wouldn't be that surprising if John Joe O'Neill put him down to wouldn't. hurdles again yeah. into a race that he's already won, beating Annie Power, um, giving her that weight. That's an unbelievable performance. On his that day, he's an a horse. That's an unbelievable performance. He could just be not the same horse. Yeah. Completely, definitely agree with that, anyone who says <coughs> that. But 
if he is, if he's putting back over hurdles, maybe put a run into him over hurdles before he goes to the world hurdle. Yeah. Obviously, he's not going to be twenty five to one on the day. So, no. um, fair shot. That's that. Yeah. Then on the same day, some people don't call it a championship race, but we're going to do it in this anyway because we've got so much to cover in the other video. Is the Ryan Air? We're on to the Ryan. This race is just no. I don't have a clue what's going on. I didn't have a pick for it before, but well, I didn't have a pick for it before yesterday yeah. actually. But um, now I do. Um, but what, what, like what, who are you uh, liking in this one? The good old Ryan Air. I mean, the vibe from Ireland at the moment is that Underso is going to go for the race. Okay. And you know, he's a very reliable horse. He jumps well. He's got a good record at Cheltenham, finishing, winning the Arkle and finishing second behind Sprinter Sakura. Yep. I like horses who have got Cheltenham form. It's one of the most unique tracks in the country. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of horses don't act around Cheltenham because it's so, so stiff. Underso, he gets the trip really well. He's got a good turn of foot. He's already proven his well being this year. Currently, five to one, he's been backed in from sevens. Um, I think he's guaranteed to run a big race. Um, a horse that was so impressed with winning the other day was Sizing John. You know, this Agreed. horse has seen Duvan's ass more than any other horse <laughs> in training. He must be sick of the sight oh, of yes. getting battered by him. His yeah. confidence just must be knocked. Yeah. But the way he beat Sub Lieutenant the other day, I thought was really impressive. He quickened past him. Now I know two and a half miles, where was that run the other day? Was it Thurlers? I know two and a half mm. miles at Thurlers isn't the same as at Cheltenham, <laughs> so he's still got to answer the question, does he stay? Mm. But a 10 to 1, I still think this represents great value each way. Yep. 100% agree with you. That's my pick as well. Sizing John, uh, you can still get him at 10 to 1, but he's as short as 13 to 2, so make sure you use the uh, grid or odds comparison grid on easy odds. Uh, obviously, he won the Kinlock Bray yesterday, like you said. It yeah. looked, he looked like a stayer in that race. I mean, he looked he like did. he stayed for two and a half, half miles. It wasn't yeah. like uh, he just held on or anything. He was running through the line that day. Um, yeah, obviously, like exactly like you said, Cheltenham is, is different to Furnace mm -hmm. after over two and a half miles. Yeah. It, didn't, it looked like he didn't stay behind Arzal at Aintree yeah. when he did two and a half miles before, but he was in, I, I would just put that down to... I don't think he's, he was at his best Yeah, at he wasn't at no. his best that yeah. day, and then he got beaten a long, long way by Duvan in the next run. Yeah. Um, he was back to somewhere near his best, which is eight lengths worse than Duvan, yeah. <laughs> uh, this first time this season for uh, Jessica Harrington, and now... He's gone for two and a half miles. There's no way he's going to run in the champion chase. Either. No, no way. What would they'll, be the point? I mean, put, yeah, you know. they'll put him in there. What is going to run the champion chase? To be honest, this is the question. It, yeah. and there may be only seven runners come today. It, it's good, it's good, it's going to be Duvan versus just a bunch. Uh, It'll be Duvan versus Fox Norman coming down to the second last. Yeah, two of them clear. If you ask me, I mean, the good thing about sizing John here as well. He's second in the arc behind Duvan. He was third behind mm -hmm. Duvan um, on his next run. Oh, sorry, second in the uh, Supreme Novices. Third in Supreme yeah. Novices. Second in the Arkle. Yeah. He's got course form again, a really key point that I like to see. Mm -hmm. he, he actually seems to really enjoy the track. And Henry de Bromherd, no, sorry, Jessica Han Harrington is a master at getting these horses ready. Yeah. I think 10 to 1 is a cracking each way back. I think that's a very, very, very Sound very, jumper as well. I think he could go a favourite as well. If, yeah. Obviously, if Nassau is not an absolute, definitely not going to run. Uh, Q-Car's not going to run. He's, no. he's, he's second favourite at the moment. Yeah. But, um, so it could go a favourite. So ten to one is decent value, I think. For yeah. support, it's almost definitely going to run. If you want a bigger price, I'll be ten to one is decent price. But Takin de Soy, uh, decent course form, former JLT JLT winner, mm -hmm. won the Bet Victor this year. Yeah. Um, ran okay in the Lexus as well. Probably trip which stretched him a little bit. Indeed. Um, really good over two and a half miles. Likes good ground. It's John Joe O'Neill knows how to get him trained for these Champions Champion. Yeah, for the Champion Festival. So the Shrewdy. He's he's an all right price at twenty to one. Uh, there's a couple of others as well. Oh, if Empire of Dark comes here, massive chance as well. I'm almost certain that he won't run as well because I think Gordon Elliott just wants to get hurdles run into him before yeah. the Grand National. Yeah. That's what he's been saying. So I really like Empire of Dark. I fancied him for the Lexus. Um, it, his jumping has just transformed this season compared mm -hmm. to last season. But um, I don't think he'll run in this. If he does, I will be backing him. But at the moment, sizing John is a decent price at 10 to 1. We both agree with that. Absolutely. Okay. Fill your boots. Fill your boots. Next up is the big race of the entire meeting, it is the biggest race of the year, the National Hunt Gem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is the Gold Cup. Um, yeah. Novice, there's a novice, there and is. the best price you can get him at is evens. There we go. That's a bit of a weird that thing. That says a lot, isn't it? doesn't it, for the Gold Cup? Um, yeah, Thistlecrack yeah. is currently evens. The race is cut up quite badly, well, Indeed. really badly. Um, but uh, who are you fancying in this one? I mean, look, at the end of the day, it's just so annoying stating the obvious. Yeah. But why would you logically oppose Thistlecrack? I know, I know. Yeah. When there's so much more to come, which yeah. is just scary. Yeah. Look at the way he won the Stayers Hurdle. He had a hack crown at the festival and won on the bridle. Mm. Beating a decent horse in Alpha de Zoblo, you know, mm. he's no mug. Look at where the rest were. 
This year, everyone was doubting his jumping, you know, he was a bit sketchy at Cheltenham, improved when he went to Newbury, and again, when he went to Kempton last time, he won the King George, I was there, on the bridle. Tom Scudamore eased down 50 yards and started waving yeah, down to this crowd. it's crazy. I watched it on TV and I was just thinking, this is the, yeah. one of the most mental things I've ever seen. Because yeah. I thought it was going to be so close, I, yeah. I just couldn't believe it, it was amazing. I did tip this crowd, but okay. I, uh, I did not think, it, I, I, can't, I had a <coughs> cling that he was going to do it quite easily, but I didn't yeah. think he was going to be eased down again. <laughs> I, I do totally get the respect of a lot of people that they say Q Card didn't run his race, and that's pretty obvious. I mean, you had Silvianco Conti, who was a nose behind him. Yeah. Um, T for two, T for three was a short head behind them. Yeah. Those horses shouldn't be anywhere near Q card no. on a going day. Mm. So there is the element that a lot of horses underperformed. Mm. But at the end of the day, you can only beat horses, however, dependent on how they run. Mm. And this is what this horse does. And the most impressive thing about him is, you know, he's three from three at Cheltenham. Uh, sorry, he's three from four at Cheltenham. And he just loves the track and he mm. stays all day. He's going to improve. Colin Tizar is just in phenomenal form. And the rest of the runners in the race, you know, we haven't got anything that's up and coming besides Native River. We've seen what Jacadam can do, we can see what Q Card can do. Outlander pro probably won't run. We've got the French horse Alaray again, he's untested. Running tomorrow. The good old Don Slowly, you know. <laughs> it's just, it's Thistle Cracks to lose, isn't it? If he jumps around, if he jumps around. Yeah. That is a big if. It's a, I mean, he is, he's a brilliant jumper, he stands off them about 450 yards, but. That is a big risk. <laughs> it's a big difference yeah. doing it at Kempton to yeah. Cheltenham. Yeah, Those fences are very unforgiving. Extra couple of furlongs as well. But yeah. I agree with you. I think Thistocrat's going to win. Yeah. He's no price, obviously, at evens. But, yeah. I mean, I, 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 on the day, if you got evens, it'll be all right. But I think they'll go six to four. Do you? Yeah. They okay. always go big prices on the day. Yeah. And, you know, it's the big festival. Very competitive. And I think yeah. they'll get six to four on the day. Yeah, it's crazy. A novice at six to four really to evens in the, in the Gold Cup. But yeah. it, what, did he, what, what more can he do, really? I mean, he's a freak, um, isn't he? Yeah, I think a part of the problem with uh, the King George, time yeah. wasn't amazing either, no. a lot of people have, have yeah. said, but he, um, <coughs> Q card doesn't, isn't as good going right-handed, mm -hmm. and, and he doesn't like Kempton, I don't think, as much as he likes Cheltenham. Yeah. So it would not surprise me if Q card got a little bit closer mm -hmm. to him at, um, at Cheltenham, because he was absolutely tank it's a, definitely the right decision to go to the Gold Cup as 100%. well. 100%, I can't um, see how he would have the speed for the Ryanair yeah, at this stage. Yeah, and he... Uh, yeah, I think he. It could be a different story. Not, not, not that I don't think. I don't think he's going to beat him. I think this yeah. is correct a better horse, but I think he might get a little bit closer. And it, that's he's obviously better than Tilbanaco Conti and T for free and stuff. Quite a mile. Um, so yeah, Thistlecrack, another one that I tipped in October, seven to one. Uh, hopefully, some of you got on that. Uh, silence of doubters at, at every turn so far this season. Obviously, he's had one that one bad couple of jumps at Cheltenham. Yeah, but. Um, uh, I think I think he was, he's the most likely winner, but you know, yeah. are, are we looking at a Colin Tizard one, two, three, four? Oh, we'll see what Allery does at the yeah. weekend if he runs. Um, is, he, is he running at Haydock or? Astor? He is indeed. He's running at Haydock. Yeah, Off so of a mark of one six two. Yeah, he's, he's, he's given an absolutely monster mark, hasn't he? Yeah, like French. Um, apparently, second in the French version of the King George and second in the French version of the French Gold Cup. Yeah, so very highly thought of by the British handicapper. Yeah. Okay, I think he might be a little bit better on better ground as well. So yeah. that, that's interesting. Well, and that's interesting. one a. Uh, um, Obviously, I've been tipping Native River all year as well. Um, relentless galloper. Yeah. Uh, little short price at the moment, mm -hmm. I think. I think six to one's a little short. Yeah. He's won a Hennessy, which probably wasn't the best Hennessy in the world. He's mm -hmm. won a Welsh National. He's a very, very, very good horse. Grand National one day, definitely. Yeah. Um, could could put up to Fistle Crack, which is, will be interesting. Um, he could easily have the one, two, three, four. Easily, easily, easy. Absolutely. One that I'm going for is another John Joe O'Neill horse at a big price. Um, I like these ones because he, he, he trains them completely Oof. for the festival. Nothing else in March. Oof. Also, like is <laughs> Minella Rocco currently Pretty available sure. thirty three to one. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously an enormous risk. He hasn't shown that much this yeah. year. He got he fell at the last when he probably was beaten anyway. I don't know. Uh, it's iffy, but um, it was almost definitely beaten anyway. Uh, but he beat Native River at the festival last year in the four miler mm -hmm. quite comprehensively as well. He improved massively in the spring last season as well um, nobody can get to the festival as, as like John Joe O'Neill can um, and also what is uh, JP going to have in the race that's a very good point he's, he's, he, he's the point. lowest priced JP horse in the, in the race and, he's, he and, and if he does run he's yeah. gonna, he'll be lower than 33 to 1 if yeah. he does run he'll be about 20 he's probably less than that 16, 12 maybe yeah. um, because JP's going to want something in the race and he's most certainly <clears> I mean more of that's almost definitely not going to run now um, so yeah, I think he's all right. he's a good price at thirty three to one. So yeah. 
I mean, the only other horse we haven't mentioned is Jacques Adam, who's been second in two Gold Cups. Of course. Very admirable horse. The only thing is, when he steps up beyond two and a half miles, he never wins these champion show pieces over three miles or three miles plus. But uh, he jumps Cheltenham really well. Mm -hmm. Second in two Gold Cups speaks for itself. He's sure to run a big race, currently available at 12 to 1. He could definitely make the places, and mm. to be honest, you'd really be disappointed if he's not in the top three. Wouldn't yeah, you? looking for a, if you're looking for a place, he's a good horse, yeah. definitely in the Gold Cup. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's as he will be ever as good as you know the Thistle Cracks or anything like not. that. But There's he's no shadow of a doubt. but he's uh, yeah. he's he's still young and uh, he's 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 a good each way bet definitely. So it looks like at this stage we've got Duvan and Thistle Crack in the naughty doubles. So hopefully Ooh. we can get something to boost the trouble. <laughs> okay. okay, that's that. Indeed, that is that for our championship race video. Uh, the next up is the novice races and everything else we've got. I've got a couple of handicappers that I like actually. So um, remember to download our app, uh, which is available now. Uh, there should be a video somewhere around here that will be showing how to use the app. It's going to be, it's, it's, I'll call the best odds. It's going to have all my tips on there. It's going to have this video on there. And we've also got a new app that's just come out as well. Remember to down, uh, subscribe and like this video. Um, there's going to be a lot more Cheltenham videos uh, as well as the novice races leading up to the festival. I'll be doing you know single races on the Gold Cup, single single videos on the Gold Cup, single videos on the Supreme and stuff like that. So um, thank you very much, well, racing blogger. Great to see you. Brilliant. Hopefully the viewers can get a few winners. Yeah. Bye.